Welcome to this first demo of Java Under the Hood, in which I'll demonstrate the use of local variables of a primitive type. And I'll do that by demonstrating following code. Here we have a small class with just one method, the main method. And in the main method, there is a declaration of three integer variables, int number one, number two, and sum. And after that, the assignment of some values to the variables. So three to number one, four to number two, and then the sum of those two variables to the sum variable. Now, in the introduction video, I mentioned three memory areas managed by the Java Virtual Machine. And the first memory area that comes into play when I execute this program is the method area. That is where the compiled Java code or the bytecode is stored. The second of those managed memory areas is a stack and the stack is the location where local variables and parameters are stored as I'll demonstrate shortly but I'll focus on the declaration of the local variables mainly now the slides representing the memory layout will always look like this at the top I have the method area in which a Java statement will appear and when explaining that statement there will be an interaction on the data and the data is subdivided into stack and heap. In this demo, I only need the stack. So let's see how this works. Now the first statement I want to explain is the declaration of int number one. And so local variables will be uh, stored in the stack. The stack is represented here by this gray rectangle and it implies a width of 32 bits. When I declare int number one, we see the actual variable having a full width, since an integer is 32 bits. Now, what do the uh, other tags mean? Number one and this 100 notation. Well, number one is actually the name or label of the variable. And then the 100 notation represents its unique address or location of that variable in the stack memory. Now, 100 is a fictional number. I could have used another number. Now, every variable is located at some unique address in memory. You can compare it with a house in a street. Every house is located at some unique address. And that address is represented by a number. So, this is the content of the variable. This is the name or label of the variable. And this represents the unique address. Now, what does this notation 100 followed by square brackets 1 mean? Well, Local variables and parameters are stored in what is called a local variables array. In this array, variables are stored one next to the other at a position denoted by an index. Here we see an uh, index of one, but actually the uh, indexes are what we call zero based, meaning the first element is stored at position zero, the second at position one. So actually, Number one is located at position one, but what is located at position zero then? Well, it is my arguments parameter of the main methods. And as a general rule in Java, parameters are stored before the actual local variables in this local variables array. It's clearly demonstrated when you would inspect bytecodes. More about parameters in a subsequent video. When I declare int number two, what happens then? Well, similar story as with number one, but then at a subsequent position in the locals variables array. So at position with index two, the third element, and then something similar with the declaration of my int sum, uh, but at a position index three or the fourth position. So this represents my local variables array. Now, in my demos, I visualize the stack as growing downwards with increasing addresses. I might have chosen to visualize it growing upwards or yet in another fashion. But actually, the Java specification doesn't enforce how data structures should be implemented. Uh, implementation designers can choose whatever they deem most appropriate, as long as the execution of the Java program behaves according to the Java specification. Now, in the second part, I assign values to the variables. And let's see what happens then in my stack memory. Let's start with the value of three being assigned to number one. 
Now every assignment can be split into three parts. On the right hand side we have what we want to assign to my variable, then the second part is the actual assignment operator and then on the left hand side we see something that represents the location in memory where the value of 3 will be stored. And then upon executing this statement the Java runtime environment will look for the location in memory of number 1 in my stack which is here and at that location the value of 3 will be assigned. Now since everything is stored in a binary format the internal representation will be the binary representation of the value 3 which consists of 30 bits of 0 plus 2 bits of 1. But I'll use the decimal notation to make it more readable. Similar story applies when we assign the value of 4 to number 2. And then when we execute the sum of number 1 and number 2, well what happens then? So first we execute everything that is located on the right hand side of the assignment operator. So we read out the content of number 1 which is 3, we add to that the content of number 2 which is 4 and we assign the result of 7 to the location in memory where sum is and this results in the following. And so if we would print out the content of sum the result will be 7. Okay this for my first demo. Bye bye.